Good evening and welcome. My name is Tim Hathaway. I'm one of the pastors here at Calvary. It's my privilege to welcome all of you tonight. I know many of you are guests uh, joining us this evening, and we just extend uh, a special welcome to you. Thank you for joining us tonight, December 1st, uh, the beginning of the Advent season, and so many great events ahead. I'll mention just three. Uh, first of all, two weeks from today, this morning and this evening, uh, in the evening at 6 p.m. will be our annual Christmas concert uh, entitled Light of the World, where all of the worship ministries of Calvary uh, combine together to present about a 90-minute concert. If you've never been a part of that, I encourage you to, to participate. And then, of course, on December 24th, our Christmas Eve services at 4, 6, and 8 p.m. Again, if you've never been a part of that, beautiful, beautiful service with a candlelight and uh, look forward to that. And then also, maybe you saw the slide as you came in tonight, our senior pastor, John Monroe, begins a new series this coming Sunday in our Sunday morning worship services, continuing uh, through December then on the Gospel of Matthew. So I encourage you to, to, to participate uh, in all of those opportunities. Looking ahead to the end tonight, after the service, we'll light the beautiful Christmas tree out in the gallery and enjoy some uh, time and refreshments there. Also, just a heads up for parents of the children's choirs tonight. Um, the Joyful Praise Children's Choir as you, does not meet tonight. We Praisers is going to meet. You'll be dismissed in a little while here in the service. And then later in the service tonight, we'll dismiss the We Praiser parents to go pick the kids up so they can be uh, be out at the tree. Also want to join or uh, welcome our live stream audience joining us tonight. And uh, so grateful that you're participating with us. A verse that we use a lot here in our worship is Psalm 66, 2, that says to sing the glory of his name and to make his praise glorious. And I love that verse and the opportunity that we have to do that. It's such a privilege to be a part of a church uh, that loves to worship and loves uh, doing music in so many different styles from people from every generation from an all, and from all backgrounds. And it's so such a privilege for me to join together uh, with the great team that we have here at Calvary, we have our Calvary Brass. You heard Nancy Tashir on piano. We have Mary Torando on, on flute. And then, of course, tonight uh, featuring Elizabeth Hildebrand uh, on organ. Elizabeth uh, joined our staff 10 years ago in 2009 and has done a fantastic job coming on uh, first as organist, now as also as choir accompanist and also does a lot here as a part of our team. Uh, in selecting our music, working with some of our small instrumental ensembles. And uh, those of you who are part of Calvary know that, and you know you're in for a treat uh, tonight. And let's welcome Elizabeth and our great musicians here at Calvary. Thank you. Let me pray, and then we're going to worship together. Father in heaven, we come before you tonight with grateful hearts. And we do pray that you would help us to make your praise glorious, Father, first from our very hearts, seeking to praise you, and then in a wholehearted way, we thank you for all of our instrumental team tonight, for our tech team, and God, we pray you would work in each of their hearts. As we thank you for their hours and hours and of uh, planning and of preparation and for this offering tonight. We know that you'll be glorified, and we pray that uh, it would just be a wonderful night of praise. Pray for Pastor Matt Thompson as he brings your word here uh, to us in a few minutes. And again, we, with thanksgiving in our hearts tonight, commit this night to you in the name that is above every name, the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. A familiar verse, Luke chapter 2, verse 14, uh, heavenly host praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. And as always, we seek to glorify the Lord tonight. Glory be to God in the highest. Let's stand together and we're going to begin tonight joining our voices on this great carol. Let's sing together.
you. Please be seated.
my heart is certainly warmed, and I'm sure yours is as well. Um, I'm telling you, that, five, that little boy over here with blonde hair, if you want to know what I looked like at age five or six, that's it right there. <laughs> but uh, thank you for being here. Let's, let's go to the Lord in prayer as we open up his word. Father, we come to you this part of the service where we open up your word. And Father, we pray that you would be high and lifted up in this place that your name would be glorified and honored. We pray that your Holy Spirit would guide us, convict us, change us, and speak to us through your word. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you have your Bible, turn to 1 John chapter 4. I've been asked to give just a simple gospel message tonight. We're going to be in verses 10 through 11. If you have don't have your Bible, feel free to grab one in the pew rack. It's uh, page um, 1023 in the Pew Bible. And as you're turning there, just a reminder that we have kicked off our Advent booklet tonight. This has 25 family devotions for you so that you can keep your eyes on Christ this Christmas season. They're really short devotions. I think they're about five minutes. And the Word Room is open after this service. If you didn't have a chance to get one, uh, please take an opportunity to, to get one of those in the Word Room so that you can keep your eyes on Christ uh, this Christmas season. Let me read the verses 10 and 11 to us. In this is love. Not that we have loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. On December 9th, 1965, CBS launched a Christmas animation that became an instant classic. I'd be willing to guess that just about everybody in this sanctuary has seen it, at least parts of it. Uh, the show has won an Emmy, a Peabody Award, and it has been a long-standing tradition in countless homes over the Christmas season for nearly 50 years. If you haven't guessed it by now, let me give you a couple Hence, the two main fic fictional characters are a young boy and his pet beagle. Can you guess it? A Charlie Brown's Christmas. The main point of Charlie Brown's Christmas is that Charlie finds himself distracted and depressed at, at Christmas season over the commercialism that is going on around him. He is struggling to understand the true meaning of Christmas amidst all the busyness, the lights and the camera and the action. Uh, let's keep in mind that this was over 50 years ago, so the only Amazon that Charlie Brown knew was a river in South America. Uh, there, there was no uh, click of a button, there was no loading items into a virtual shopping cart through uh, his mobile phone, uh, there was no Black Friday. Certainly not like the one that we just saw this past Friday. Uh, I saw that there was $11.6 billion spent online over those two days, Christmas, or over Thanksgiving and uh, Friday. There certainly was not a Cyber Monday. Uh, the setting of the show was a different time. It was a different place, but it, it was certainly one that we can relate to. It was a relevant story. And we can certainly connect the dots and relate to it. And don't get me wrong, I don't have anything against gifts at Christmas. I certainly would accept yours with a thankful heart. Uh, but the point that I want to make tonight in this short message, this short time that I have is this. It's easy to get our eyes off of what's most important in a world like ours, especially at Christmas. I've titled this message tonight, The Cross. And that said, we know that the highlight of Charlie Brown's Christmas comes at the end of the show when Linus quotes Luke chapter 2, and he brings the nativity story of the incarnation of Jesus Christ to the center stage, as Dr. Monroe just quoted that a little bit ago. And then after Charlie hears this, he walks out into an open field, and he looks up at the stars, the twinkling stars, and he says... Linus is right, I won't let all this commercialism ruin my Christmas. 
And tonight as we begin our Advent season, as we will close with the lighting of our Christmas tree, I want to give you three Christmas stars that will guard your heart and bring you lasting joy through the Christmas season. I'll give them to you ahead of time, and then I'll make a quick stop at each one and make a couple comments, and then I want to give you one practical point to take with you tonight. The first star that brings joy is God's love. The second star is the cross. And the third star is loving one another, God's love. If you look at verse 10, in this is love, not that we have loved God, but that he loved us. John is writing to the believers in Ephesus, and the first thing that he wants the Christians to see in verse 10, he wants them to know that God is the one who has initiated the relationship. God has set his affection on them first. The creator God loved us first. And if you look down at verse 19, this becomes very clear. John says, we love because he, God, first loved us. I remember when each one of my, my kids were born in the hospital, the nurse would come in to give us a little bit of rest. Yes, husbands do get tired too. And they would take the child into the nursery. And I remember I would go to the nursery where the window was, and I would look through the window. We have six kids, believe it or not. And I would look through the window, and my child was oblivious to the fact that I was there. And little did they know that my affection was set on them. In a similar way, that's what John is saying here, that God loved you first. The second thing that John wants them to know is that God, in his perfect love, sent his son. The second star that brings us joy at Christmas is the cross. Look at the second half of verse 10. God sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. God, out of his abundant love, sent his son. And we have to ask, why did God send his son? There are people in this world who think that there are three kinds of people the good, the bad, and the somewhere in between. And I want you to know that that's not in the Bible. The Bible teaches us that there are two types of people in this world. There are the righteous and there are the wicked. And the only difference between the righteous and the wicked is that the righteous have repented of their sin and they are exclusively relying on Jesus Christ alone for their salvation. We are called to repentance and faith. A turning from sin and a turning to God with confidence for our salvation. The Bible tells us the night that Jesus crawled into the Garden of Gethsemane, that sweat became like great drops of blood falling to the ground. He was in agony. And sure, he was thinking about the crucifixion and the, and the Romans, and sure, he was thinking about the suffering and the mistreatment that he was up against. But these things only pale in comparison to the reality that he would serve as our substitute and bear on the cross the wrath of God for our sin. That's what the word propitiation means. It means to satisfy. It means to appease. That Jesus Christ satisfied God's wrath for our sin for those who believe. And I would encourage you, parents and grandparents, to never stop teaching this truth to your children and to your grandchildren. That the one who knew no sin, Jesus Christ, took our place so that in him we might become the righteousness of God, 2 Corinthians 5.21. And so we rest in his forgiveness and the righteousness that is ours in Christ. To have lasting joy at Christmas, do not lose sight of what God accomplished at the cross. We spend a lot of time talking about the nativity, and I know Pastor John will talk about that when he opens up the book of Matthew. 
But I thought tonight we would focus on the cross. The third star that brings joy is loving one another. Verse 11, beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. The purpose of John's letter was for the believers in Ephesus to know that they are truly Christian. This is one way to know. And this is all through the book of 1 John. As, as you look at verse 11, look at chapter 3, verse 11. For this is the message that you have heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. Look at verse 14. We know that we have passed out of death into life because we love the brothers. And then verse 23. And this is his commandment, that we believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and we love one another. And then again in verse 21. And this commandment we have from him whoever loves God must also love his brother the apostle John says look around love one another the three stars that bring joy at Christmas are God's love the cross and loving one another and at the end of um, I, I told you I wanted to to make a practical point to take with you tonight and before I do that, I want to just mention one more thing about Charlie Brown's Christmas. I don't know if you picked up on this, but at the end of the show, Linus is quoting Luke 2, and he drops his security blanket. And this certainly was not a mistake by the writers. As he looks up at the sky, he is focused on God's word. He drops his security blanket. And that is a simple reminder to us this Christmas season that nothing in this world will satisfy your soul, but only Christ. And let me finish with this too. Even apart from all the commercialism at Christmas, even as Christians, and John talked about this this morning, that from time to time we feel a loneliness or an emptiness. It comes in all different shapes and sizes. And some of us, for some of us, it's seasonal depression or whatever that feeling inside may be. And the feeling's real. But these feelings only remind us that this is not our home. And so let me end by giving you just one practical point to take home. Besides, if I ask you to remember all three points, stars, you'd probably forget by the time you get, get to the car. So I want to give you one simple point to remember tonight. And it's the word look. L-O-O-K. It's a verb. This Christmas, look to Christ. And let me remind you of this. When we look at the cross, the cross, there is something greater than forgiveness at the cross. These great doctrines that we have come to love at the cross, justification, forgiveness, reconciliation, salvation, are simply byproducts to something greater, a means to an end. What is the most loving thing that God could give us at Christmas? It is to know and to behold his son. This is the joy. The joy that comes from the Lord. And here's my charge to you to write those words, look, on a sticky note or uh, put it on your phone as a reminder to pop up throughout the month that as you go throughout your days this season, you will look to Jesus. Because the truth is this, you're going to leave here tonight and you're going to get into your cars and throughout this month you're going to be bombarded by commercialism. And my prayer for you would be not to be distracted. To use that word look. To look to Christ and to tell others to look to Christ so that our joy may be complete not only at Christmas but forever. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word that is true. We thank you for your love and for sending your son, Jesus, that in him we can stand forgiven. We can stand reconciled to you, a right relationship with you. Father, we thank you for tonight and the music that has been played and how it has warmed our hearts. And we pray now as we begin, as we close out tonight that we would look to you, that we would look to you to satisfy our longings, 
and that you would be with us in the days ahead. We love you. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. I'm going to close with a familiar carol. It speaks of Christ's sacrifice and with his blood, mankind, he bought. Let's stand together and join our voices. Thanks so much for coming. Let me on your behalf once again thank our Calvary Brass, uh, Nancy on the <laughs> piano <clears throat> over there, uh, Mary on the flute, and Elizabeth on the organ, and her wonderful children. Um, <laughs> everyone, Father. We do thank you for your great, great love that we've been reminded of. Uh, we thank you that you first loved us, and we want humbly to respond to that love that we see demonstrated supremely at the cross, where we can see, say with Paul, the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. May all of us look to Christ this evening, look to him for salvation, look to him for guidance, Look for him as he shines before us. And now, may your peace and your joy and your love rest on each of us, we pray in Christ's name. Amen.